So it was in 2014 that that deal fell through where we had the option to try to work this out to come and buy Jersey Freeze. And she said, are you sure? I said, yeah, fuck it, I'm sure. Let's, let's do it. What, what am I going to do? I'm not going to, you know, got time to make a move. Dude, we all have the best time ever to start a small business. If I'm not going to be 100% in, I'm not going to do it. Come on, man, just be yourself. Yeah, and, like, and just show up as yourself. If you don't realize what I'm really about, I'm about freedom, family, and my country. Maddie. Cheers. Finally, we got you on. That's you, it, man. You've been, I mean, you, guys you've been a, you guys called me a pussy. What, how many episodes ago that I wasn't coming out? So. I was Steve. I had to do it. I, I was Steve. Steve. Yeah. I think uh, we originally got connected from Mike. He put us in touch. Yes. And we had planned to put you on, but then I don't know what happened. There were some scheduling issues, but you're here now. <laughs> we won't blame Maddie. We won't blame Maddie. It's cool. And uh, live like a unicorn. Emma. Love they, Emma. Yeah, they, they spoke very highly of you guys. Mike, Jamie, uh, teachers I know in Freehold. Everybody's Jersey Freeze people, Jersey Freeze <laughs> people. They're good. They're good. So, Small world, and we're all kind of connected. It's like you come up with the same good people, and you kind of all just kind of stick together. And, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad to have you on. You guys you. are a local business owner, very involved in your community there in Freehold. Uh, father. Husband, ten months, uh, ten months old. True American and patriot. So Absolutely. Cheers to that. Cheers to that. And um, you know, I'm excited to dive into your story. So, eleven from zero to eleven, you grew up in Brooklyn. Your, your parents were from Brooklyn. My parents. My father was born in Italy. Uh, first generation. He came over about seven, eight years old. Sicilian. Um, lived in Brooklyn. My mom's from Brooklyn. Her parents. Her father had one of the biggest florists in Brooklyn, uh, in Coney Island, Malone and Sons Florist for 50 years, small business owner. He, was, he had a florist, he did all the landscaping around town. They had a, almost like a Brock farm in Freehold. They had the big nursery and, mm -hmm. you know, whole family worked there. My mom worked there when she was a kid. When I was five, six, seven years old, I was, you know, dropped off there to hang out all day and they told me oh, how to shit. do stuff. And that was it, we moved to Manalapan. You know, back then it was everyone that moved from Brooklyn usually stopped in Staten Island for a few years, and then they moved to Jersey. We just jumped right over. We got right down to it. You guys all seem to navigate to yeah. like Marlboro and Manalapan. Because someone from Hall. the block moves to Manalapan, then you, that's the first time you hear about it. Like, oh, Richie up the street moved to Jersey. You gotta Where? move to Manalapan. Manalapan. They got land. All right, yeah, sure, Manalapan. Let's go look at Manalapan. <laughs> no one's what the fuck Manalapan is. It's like we went and we looked, and we're like, oh, this is nice. Look, grass. Like, you know, it was space. We were kids in Brooklyn. If there was snow, you'd fight your neighbor. Don't take my snow. I need that for snowballs. There was no land. Mm -hmm. You know, you moved to Manalapan. It was like, okay, this is different. Farmland. This is different. Kids wearing bike helmets, and uh, this is cute. You know. You so weren't allowed you, to lead off first base in Little League, and it was just a different world out here. A completely but, uh, different world, man. That's a culture shock You grew for sure. up a lot quicker out there. You came here at 11, you felt like you were 15. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, Manalapan. Um, went to high school there, played baseball. Went to CBA. St. John Vianney for two years, and then uh, made it over to CBA, played baseball there. How'd you do? Were you better than Mike? Originally, and then Mike just took off. To Mike, Mike was a late bloomer, man. Mike... Mike just developed into this like freak of nature with this weird leg kick and this weird arm angle and he just turned into like this dominant force overnight um, and became like this lights out. He never pitched. He never pitched, Mike. It was Scalfani we're talking about. Yeah. And um, Scalfani, realtor. We played, uh, we played together since we were like you know, 11 years old. We moved to get out here at the same time. Wound up playing together in high school. And um, we were all, we were really, our whole team, we had- Were you guys friends and then went to CBA together? Yeah, we were all friends in Manalapan, we went to CBA. Uh, our other best friend, Anthony, a whole bunch of us all kind of just made it out there. And, um, you know, Mike wound up going to Rowan. I wound up going to Brookdale um, to play baseball there. And uh, we were all just the baseball guys, that's, that's all we did. We played, you know, we traveled every summer all over the place and we were good, you know? And, uh, and now here we are all old men now. Do we, we don't have to get crazy into it, but I always like to relate sports to business. And I think there's a lot of things that you can um, cross over on My both best of them. employees are athletes. Yeah. There's more discipline. There's more sense of teamwork. There's more sense of pride. They're more competitive. And um, you have to have a little bit more focus with, with simple tasks to play a sport. Uh, my, my best employees for the last eight, nine years have been athletes. It just sucks that you lose them during their season. They can't yeah. work, but they, they, they tend to be the better kids. Would you say, like, you know, a lot of times we have a lot of, 
negative things going on in the world, it's easy to just say, oh man, everybody sucks, right? The, yeah. Our generation was terrible <laughs> to the generation before us and so on and so on. Would you say these kids are still just as competitive and good kids? They're just as competitive. They're great kids. They come from great families. A lot of the stuff that drives me crazy, it's not their fault. It's what they're taught. They can't spell they can't make change. They, they're not used to having to do that. They don't have to, you know, show their work on paper. They don't yeah. have to learn how to do that kind of stuff. They have their, you know, iWatches and their iPhones and whatever it is. They're they're also what do you got an antiquated cash register over there? You don't got like a quick spin? No, we do. But I'm saying like even to look at the change, they stare at it. It's like the, it, the little <laughs> things the thing we did growing up. Yeah. Think about when you were in school and they were showing you how to make change and the picture of the quarter, picture of the dime. They I don't still do that. know how to do it. I, right. I hand the well, tab to my wife. You want a job? You fit in perfectly. <laughs> but um. <laughs> These kids, they're shy. If you put them on a tablet, they're whiz kids. But if you have to actually yeah, have them be comfortable, the social skills are the only thing I saw that are different. I mean, I get girls that come up to me at work. Can you write us a you know, a recommendation letter? I want to go to Clemson. Sure. There's three words spelled wrong in this letter you wrote to me. Like, mm -hmm. you want to go to Clemson. Like, maybe hit spell check. Little things like that. You know, and, and it's... I, I. Do you tell them? Are you, are you direct I, with them? In a, in a funny way. I mean, hey... Like, you don't want to spell check that? Like, this is spelled wrong. Don't yeah. submit this. Like, okay, yeah. What are you going to do? It's just the, it's the world the kids, that they... But those are the kids that are coming up in your community that may teach your kids one day. 100%. It, it's scary. Um, you know, you go back to even... I don't want to fast forward to COVID, but during COVID, my, my partner, Katie's niece, they were doing all the schools virtual. You have this massive looking thing crawling on your chair. I think you should get it. Oh, it's one of those uh, Chinese bugs, right? There you go. Got them? See? Good. The commies are in my backyard. <laughs> they know I'm a patriot. I, th I think you have a better, you know, perimeter setup knowing you. But. Yeah, I have fun. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah, so my partner's niece, she was either in second or third grade when they were doing all the Zoom schools. And we let her do the school in our dining room while we were closed, and her mom works for us. We'll get to that later. But you're watching her, so you're listening, you can hear what's going on in their classroom for the first couple weeks of school. I guess that would be fall of 2020 when the schools were shut. It's one thing to teach the kids about manners and being polite and bullying and this. Very important. I think that starts at home way before school. Yeah, right? that's the parents' but job. But you're listening to it, and it's like, okay, now we're in week two. Is there going to be any math? Is there going to be any history? Is there going to be any English? Like, we're still doing, you know, what do you do if so-and-so has... It, it was almost like enough now. Yeah. You know, it starts at home. And this is what these kids are getting. And you can't blame them because this is all they know. They go to school now. Yeah, that's what they know. And it's what they know. And they're they're very good kids, but it's just, it's not their fault. Yeah, they're not being led by, you know, strong leaders that are right. holding them accountable. And you can, and you can almost see the teachers are almost, I don't know if they necessarily agree with it either. They're just being, they're teaching the curriculum that's presented to them. My wife is a teacher in Marijuana. Right. Uh, she has a master's in math and she's a special ed teacher as well. So she really deals with some difficult situations and my uh, brother's a teacher. She he feels the same way. The, the kids tied. are the weirdest they have ever been. And my wife loves the kids, still loves the kids, and you know has tried to communicate with many, many parents. The system that they're in, these teachers are just it's stuck. unbelievable. They're and, stuck. And think about it: you're a teacher that came out of college. Majority of people didn't have a parent who helped them pay for it. So now you're stuck with this college loan. You have no ability to go take risk and go do something like you did or I did right. or Evan did or business owners did, right? You're stuck in this job. You're, you're stuck on, I say it all the time, you're stuck on the tit, you know? You come out of college, you got this big college debt. You then go these buy a house. These step raises and you, now you're here and you can't go back Everything down Everything coming here. in is going back out to the institution. So these teachers are just stuck in the system. I personally believe the, the world is going to swing back it towards to. the good. It has and to. And the schools are going to be, you know, changed. And I don't think it could be, you know, the, the best in the world, but I think we could be much better. I think our generation, and I mean, I'm 40 years old. I think people a few years younger than me, a few years older than me, our, our generation, our like seven or eight year swing. I think that as our kids start to grow up, I think they're gonna that, be great kids. I think they're gonna be. I think we're gonna swing back in the right direction. Yeah, and, and it's just gonna. It, it's instilled at home. It starts. It starts at home. It's always uh, yeah. you always one generation away from losing your values and, and yep. your freedoms. But jumping back, so we, we we play CBA. We then go off to Brookdale. You then transferred out to Brookdale's the best two years I ever had playing baseball. That that program is an absolute monster. The the guys there. I had the best time of my life playing baseball at Brookdale. It's a junior college powerhouse. I over overachieved there. Um, wound up getting a scholarship to Drexel University in Philly. Um, didn't belong there. Didn't even have my major, but they called and 
the price was right, and I said, fuck it, let's go. Center City, Philly felt more like where I grew up, you know. I'm in, I'm in Drexel playing ball, and um, junior season comes to an end, and they call us into the room. They say, hey, guys, you ever hear of Title IX? A little bit. Well, we, uh, we're canning the women's volleyball program, so that means we got to cut a men's team. Baseball doesn't bring any revenue, so you guys are out. Oh, all right, let's go Great. fuck myself. I just re-signed a lease on my apartment <laughs> in Center City, Philadelphia, but fuck me, I guess, right? And uh, I was like, you know what? I played baseball since, since you're four or five years old. I'm not going to go out like that. I got one year left of eligibility. I'm going to play somewhere. So if you transfer to another Division I school, you have to take a minimum of 60 credits. I was going to graduate on time. I wasn't going to take a fifth year of school just to play one year of baseball. So I was like, all right, well, let's look around. Stockton, not far. So we'll transfer there. I had a couple friends that played ball there already. I said, I'm going to go to Stockton. Transferred most of my credits over. Played there my season in uh, my senior year. Lived in a beach house down in Margate with my buddy Johnny that I grew up with. And uh, that was it. Graduated from Stockton. Criminal justice. After 9-11, I knew I wanted to be a cop. I knew I was going to get into criminal justice at some point. I would have been a Marine probably. 9 11 really go. motivated you to. I, if I wasn't playing baseball, I probably would have joined the Marines. I would have given my mother a stroke, but I, I was I, I was leaning that way. I would say so many people that were uh, my age and probably, you know, like you said, that, that window of seven, eight years yeah. were motivated to either go into armed forces uh, or, you know, police fire. Right. Do you ever think about was 9 11 real or not? <laughs> I, I, for another day, but yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I mean, yeah I, 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 and it's so crazy. Like my how, dad was in the city that day, and he, I mean, he took the Tap and Z home. He couldn't get in touch with us till probably 2 p.m. that afternoon. My dad was a concrete guy, construction guy. They were doing foundations for high-rise buildings. He was probably like 25 blocks away north. And um, about two o'clock, we finally got a call that he's okay. He doesn't know how he's getting home, but he's okay. And he wound up taking the Tap and Z, going through Connecticut, coming home. He wound up coming home like two in the morning. And you know, then they were going back. His company was doing a lot of the excavating and the cleanup down there. But uh, yeah, that was that was something, man. That How's was your dad's health. Huh? How's your dad health? No, no. I mean, he smokes. He's had throat cancer. He's had open heart surgery. He he's doing okay now. He he's a uh, Sal's one of a kind. But his health was rocky for a while, like mm -hmm. in the mid 2000s. And who knows? You know, I mean, you yeah, can't well, really say yeah, anything well, because. There. Yeah, you know, he was again. Like, I don't. I don't want to beat a dead horse, but like, I never thought that way. And then over the last five years, you like, start seeing some shit. All this crazy stuff has been going on, and then like these videos. As come people out. die and as people get older, more and more shit gets yeah, released like, that yeah, they didn't more normally talk about. And you're like, and, okay, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense. Yeah. So yeah, well, for another day. For another day, but that motivated you to say, hey, again, I love my country. I want to go serve civic duty. I wanted duty. to play ball. I got into law enforcement. Uh, I wound up going to work in Manhattan for a couple of years with my dad in the concrete union right after college, waiting to get into the police academy. Um, I wound up doing the alternate route program, Monmouth County Police Academy. I put myself through, which means, I mean, I don't know if you're familiar with how that works. If you get hired as a cop in Jersey, if you get hired by the town, they put you through the academy. So you're yeah. getting a salary while you're in the academy. You're essentially on day shift for 24 weeks. Mm -hmm. Alternate route, you're, you're paying your own way. You're not getting paid. So that's the quickest way to get a job, essentially, if you want to. So I got into the alternate route program, background checks, all that stuff checked out. Put myself through the Monmouth County Academy, and I said, and normally with the alternate route guys, you normally get a call, start interviewing. How like, old were you in, when you went in? I was 23, Did you know James DePonte by any chance? Sounds familiar. Yeah. I don't know when he it's went probably through. probably right around that time he was in I went through in uh, early 06, late yeah. 05 was. But I uh, put myself through. And I said, whoever calls me first, I'm going to take the job. As long as it's reasonable and it's within like you know, an hour or so, I'm going to take the job. So town, Denellen, New Jersey, never heard about it. Never even heard of it. Middlesex you said County. It's like a weird 50s town. It's like stuck in the 50s. It's like a mile and a half square, just a weird little place. It's, it's one of those places where- Sounds you, actually cool. If you drove through it, you'd be like, oh, I was there before. You didn't even know you were in Denellen because then you're out of Denellen by the time you get, you know, by the time you pick your head up. It's like in between like Warren, Wachung, Middlesex, Plainfield. Eddie Bravo said there's a lot of towns like that in the world. Weird, bro. It's yeah. a weird fucking place, man. <laughs> like, it's like, like what, what literally here? stuck in the 50s. Like, I don't, even, I don't even know where I am right now. It's a weird place. Weird place. They were the first people to call me. Took the job. You know, it, it, when I started there, I, and then I was getting calls. Neptune, Coltsneck, Monroe, all the towns down you, here that I wanted to You don't have a work. cop mentality to me. And again, maybe because you're removed from it now. I, but. You know what? I, I did. I did, yeah. I didn't, I, it never was. It was never, never you, all maybe? Or? Yeah, so I was in Denellen, um, had a great time. I, some of the best guys, 
all this shit going on now with the cops, man, this defunding the police. Listen, at the end of the day, if you take 100 cops, 100 men and women in blue, three or four of them are going to be pieces of shit. Mm -hmm. 95, 96 of them are going to be some of the best people you'll ever meet in your life. That's a pretty high percentage. There's a lot of other industries where, like... Uh, I'm telling you, it's about... A larger percentage or a piece of shit. When shit happens, like with the George Floyd stuff, oh, 99% of them, it's about 95, 96%. We had a 20-man department. There were two or three guys I wouldn't want in my house. 17 guys I would give the shirt off my back. Mm -hmm. That's about the number. And um, it was uh, four years in, I was the PBA president. Four years in, I get voted in as the PBA president. These guys entrusted me to run their union. That's the mentality I had to them, you know? Uh, Maddie's going to negotiate the contract. Maddie's going to get us a better schedule. I was the town council's nightmare. So where do you think you got that personality? That's my old man. So just, that's, that's my old man. Never turned down a day of work. Never turned down a paycheck. Never turned down an hour of overtime. Come on, let's go. We got to go to work. What are you doing? You know, what are you doing? And uh, that's the one thing I got from this. He's rough around the edges. Work he's, ethic. He's, you know, exactly. Yeah. It's just all, you know, he still has concrete embedded in his hands from God knows how long ago. You know, he just retired. But I was a PBA president, and that's the, the best thing I could take out of my law enforcement career. Like, those guys trusted me with their careers and their lives and, and we had guys that got jammed up while I was in charge and I had to you know go go to bat for them. There were guys that had other issues and I was working my way up in terms of the PBA. Whereas if I stayed in law enforcement, I would have probably been involved in the state PBA and I would have went that route in my career. You know, I was looking to go to law school, I was looking to go to the prosecutor's office, I was gonna change departments. Listen, you're you're at a place for four, five, six years you're going up the pay scale, it's very tough to start over somewhere else. Yeah. And you don't know any better. Mm-hmm. You know, so I'm in Denellen now five years, six years before Governor Christie came in and changed all the pensions and all the rules. So we only had like six steps to top pay. Here I am, I just got married, bought a house. I can't take a fifty thousand dollar pay cut. Yeah. So I'm stuck in Denellen. It's fine. I was, you know, PBA president and um Mike Scalfani calls me. I'm on my honeymoon. <laughs> how how many years in to the police I am this now. four and a half years in, four or five years in, PBA he, president. Did he go to your wedding? Yeah, he was in my wedding. So he just saw you at the wedding. He, he was in, talk, my, in my wedding. He couldn't talk about it right. then? He had He's to wait until I was in Hawaii having a cocktail to start texting me, <laughs> hey, uh, I lost 20 pounds at this fucking gym. You want to do this with me? And my, my wife still to this day is like, he couldn't wait till he got home. So he's like, hey, when you have a chance to call, give me a call. So I'm like, all right, give him a call. He's like, I've been going to this gym. I go, I'm sorry, you, you're going to a gym? You, you met Mike. Mike's yeah. never been to a gym in his life. He's going to CKO Kickboxing in Hoboken. I only know Mike is going to the gym. Right. So Mike, uh, great baseball player, never went to the gym, never lifted weights. He was, wasn't a gym guy. He just wasn't his thing. Goes to CKO Kickboxing in Hoboken, loses like 40 pounds. Loves it. When you get home, you have to come take a class. You have to check this place out. I said, okay, no problem. Me and my brother, we go up there. We go to Hoboken. We take a look. Cool concept, you know. What do you think we open one in Manal? I said... All right, fuck it, you know? Let's what are we going to do? Out. It wasn't a huge investment money-wise. Um, I said, listen, you guys use the credit card. If it, they, was... if it doesn't work, at least we own something cool and maybe we'll be in shape, you know? We have a gym, mm-hmm. whatever. Yeah, the credit cards was crazy. We opened the fucking thing on credit cards. Dude, but so. that's, again, like a lot of people... Smart. A Smart. lot of people are always like, I don't have the funds, or I don't have this, and we, figured you know, it we out. can get into it with Jersey Freeze a little bit. Like, dude, you don't always need to have, like... A chunk of cash. A chunk of right? cash. Like, there's other ways to do it. It's First how much for how long? Other people's money. How much money? for how long? Yeah, and, and how much am I going to get in right now? Yep. And how long do I need that? And how can I get it back to how that How much person? for how long? And, and literally, we sat there, and we said, okay, we all had other jobs. My brother was a personal trainer, and a baseball coach, and a teacher, and Mike was at Lehman at the time, and I was a police officer. We had other incomes. Okay, we're going to do this. We're going to bust our ass until every dollar is paid off. And then we're going to start, you know, taking money from it. And it, it, it literally was, it blew up. It, CKO Freehold, though, is, is not like any other CKO. CKO Freehold, and I'll say this now because besides for Mike, I don't give a fuck about anybody else. At all. These other CKOs, it's Mike CKO at Freehold. He's like a brother. That CKO Freehold is unlike any other CKO in the country. Why? It's it, the energy, the way we did things there you wouldn't even think it was a CKO. You'd walk into, we'd have people that were coming in that would go to CKOs that are now closed, Eatontown, Jackson, ones that aren't even in business anymore, and say, I took a class in, in Eatontown, I hated it. And they walk into Freeland, like, holy shit, this place is fucking awesome. It was awesome. You the way the we vibes. did things, man, we ran that place like, it was the place to be for years. And we took, I mean. How long did you and your brother stay on as partners with Mike? 2018, middle of 2018. 
So you almost feel bad that you got out right before COVID because yeah. of the hard time he had. But it was time. It was my brother was, you know, looking to get into other things, and I couldn't be the way we had CKO. Mike did a lot of the back of house stuff, a lot of the you know the, the paperwork kind of things, and I was the more hands on, you know, taught a lot more classes, that kind of thing. I couldn't be in three places at once. Yeah, I just physically much. couldn't clone myself. So you got it, kids, it, a wife. it didn't work for me because Jersey Freeze is such a hands on business. The way Katie and I do it, we're right there every day with everybody. It's it wasn't working, and it, it was all it was all good. It was like Mike, you want to, you know, CKO is your well, main. Katie also was a member at CKO or worked there too. Yeah, so Katie, because you jumped ahead of over there. Katie was one of my first, our first members at CKO. She lived around the corner, and I remember the first day of class. And shout out to Katie, your partner. Shout out to here. Katie, my partner. Um, we'll we'll touch on all that in a little bit, I guess, right? But she, the first day of CKO, I remember one of our other trainers, like, who, who's that blonde in the back? She's hitting the bag like a, like an animal. Like, who is this girl? We gotta get her to be a trainer. I don't know, we'll find out. And a couple couple weeks go by, and oh, that's Katie. She's the general manager of Jersey Free. She might even own a piece of it. I don't know, it looks like she has a lot of money. I don't know. So, Katie was, um, became a trainer at CKO. Just did it because she liked it, didn't need to. Yeah. She taught like two classes a week. She took classes. Her and my wife became like, so close they were like best friends they work out together they were you know everybody got close we all got close mike my wife kate everybody was friends katie was worked at jersey free since she was 15 years old oh shit so at the time she wasn't she was like in her mid to late 30s so she was there 20 something years already at, the, at that time the old owner was like a father to her man she really loved that she place worked and that family, there since huh? she was a teenager that was her only job she ever had she worked there as a teenager and just stayed she stayed all through college. She became the manager. She she ran that place, ran it. Hands down, ran the place. The old owner would take months off in Florida and Hawaii. He was all over the place. She yeah. ran the show. He had a blessing with her. He had a blessing. He was like a, She was like a daughter to him. Mm -hmm. You know, both her, you know, I don't want to get too personal, but both her parents died when she was very young. Yeah. And this guy kind of took her under her wing, the old owner. And um, it was... She was Jersey Freeze. We got to get her on. That's a, that's yeah, a cool I mean, story she, in itself. She, you know, so... The original plan was that she was gonna take over Jersey Freeze when, when Bruce retired. And that was how we knew her. Oh, Katie's gonna take over Jersey Freeze. It wasn't just taking over Jersey Freeze though, they were gonna knock it down. There were all these rumors for years, it was gonna be an Olive Garden, it was gonna be this, it was gonna be that. The, the, the one that got the closest was Hula Hands. Well, all you Italians out there go to Olive Garden. I would never go to Olive Garden in my <laughs> life. I used to, I think I've been there twice because, you know, on baseball <laughs> trips out of state. I've only been to Olive Garden's out of state because that's your only option in like North Carolina and Florida. Come on, the breadsticks though? Were breadsticks banging. and sangria and salad. That's yeah. it, you know? So they were gonna, someone was, you, you always heard someone was gonna come in and Somebody buy the property. Somebody was gonna come and, and level it off. There's four acres of property and there. And Katie's sitting there going, this is gonna be my future. Well, yeah. I think it got to the point where Katie's like, oh, what am I doing? Because who knows who's going to take over and what am I doing with Jersey Freeze? He's going to give me the name, but where am I putting it? What am I doing? So it got the closest with Hula Hands. And this is probably a year or two before I was even involved. This is probably go back like 2012, 2013, 2014. Hula Hands is going to come in and they're going to buy Jersey Freeze, all the property, four acres of property. They're going to knock crazy. down. You guys have four acres. There. It's, it's half in Friol Borough, half in Friol Township. Because when you threw that fair back. thing recently, I'm like, where is he putting all this stuff? Yeah, we've got the hill, picnic lot. tables. It's, it's bigger than you think. It's yeah. clear now. You see at night when the lights are on, you kind of tell where it goes. But it's four acres. So they were going to knock it down. They were going to put a hula hands. They were going to build Katie a little Jersey freeze, like a little ice cream shop. Just ice cream, no food. Mm -hmm. And they were going to put a bank and a courtyard, and it was going to be a whole little shopping center. The old owner had a liquor license. He had a liquor license that was only good in Freehold Borough. It was a Freehold Borough liquor now, license. Now, did he just strategically pick that up because it was He on? had it. I don't know the, the exact details, but he had it from, from his father had it. It was a little more of an investment. He held on to it. it was the last smart. One. That's what I'm saying. It was the last smart. one in town. It was the last one in town. So he had this, this Freehold Borough liquor license knowing that if anybody ever bought the property, he yeah. had the liquor license with it. And it would mainly be a chain restaurant. And because it was Freehold Borough, the restaurant had to be on the Freehold Borough side of the property, which is back by our warehouse down in Alpen Avenue. So that's where the hula hands had to be. It had to be in Freehold Borough. Mm -hmm. Town comes in, they says, hey, I, you have a warehouse there now. You think that's gonna be a hula hands? You think the sewer system is gonna support a hula hands and a bar? No, you need to run a sewer line about a half, half a mile to three quarters of a mile out to Route 9 and connect to one of the basins in Freehold Township. It's like a million and a half dollars, okay? Hulahan says, well, we're not paying for that. The old owner says, well, I'm not paying for that. And then the deal kind of fell through. 
it's it's funny because let me back up because I got ahead of myself. Katie had joked around saying, hey, I'm gonna open, you know, I'm gonna have this jersey freeze. Hands said, whatever hands we open moving forward, we wanna do a hand jersey freeze. This was the model. Are you interested? I said, I'm not interested in renting an ice cream store. I have a career, I, you know, that this is perfect for you. This is this is exactly what you wanted, your own little ice cream shop. You know, God, God bless. Yeah, go do it. When the deal fell through, now the old owner who's half retired, half living in Florida, thinking he's gonna cash out and, and live his, enjoy his life that he worked so hard to get, he says, hey, I've got a problem. That whole deal, that little ice cream shop they were building you, those blueprints you have inside, that's not happening. Um, I might have another solution. Do you want to buy the whole property? Everything. Well, how are we going to do that? You know, it was you know, over $4 million with the liquor license. Oh, don't worry about the liquor license. I'm going to do something else with the liquor license. You're just going to buy the property and Jersey Freeze and the business, and you can leave it as is. What about the sewer? You don't have to worry about the sewer. You're leaving it, the building up, your grandfather didn't, you don't have to touch anything. She comes back to me. Now I'm interested. I've, now I've gotten a taste of being an entrepreneur. I've opened the gyms. I, I see that there's no ceiling when you have your own business. I wasn't now, were worried you, about- Were you getting frustrated with being a cop at that time? And I was getting frustrated. My law enforcement career, I was so good at what I did, but when I became the PBA president, you get a target put on your back. You're that yeah. guy. I went from being- Because you're no longer a part of the administrative state you and know, the politics. And I was being fast-tracked to being promoted and I was squared away and I was you know, getting all these extra tasks thrown at me and I was working every overtime shift you can think of, road jobs and this and that. Once I opened the gyms, all my extra time was at the gym. So I was unable to take all these extra details and I wasn't around as much as I was before the gym. So there was a little resentment from the other guys. Like, oh, you know, he's got businesses now, he doesn't care. It's fine. Listen, guys are, some people are a little small minded when it comes to certain things. And you know, I went from being concerned with what step I was at on my contract to, no, I can work for myself and I can outwork this guy and this guy and this guy and I can be here. And I don't got to deal with any and of the I don't politics. Have to deal with it. And I didn't do politics. And that's why, you know, I didn't give a shit about being promoted. I did the math. I would have got promoted by just from being there. Yeah. You know, just from being competent, I would have been chief of that place, you know, Quickly. towards the end of my career. I wasn't doing politics. I refused. I, you know, what was right was right. What was black was black. What was white what was white. I didn't play games with that. And, and the guys That's knew that. That's called being a real person. Exactly. And, and listen, to this day, the contracts I negotiated for those guys, they're still benefiting from it now. The guys that are working there now that I never met. Mm -hmm. You know, the stuff I negotiated into those contracts. And it was just all just common sense, you know? Hey, you're going to spend this amount of money, you know, figuring this out. Why don't we just do this? This is, let's wait, stop wasting everybody's time. Did you ever think you had like an entrepreneurial brain before you did the I gym? Did. I did, but I was going to go to law school and I was going to get into like contract law. I was going to be a, a guy who went to these PBAs and was the guy who did their contracts. I, that was going to be my, I was going to go to like Seton Hall Law at night. I was going to do something like that and stay in the law enforcement field because I couldn't just be in Denellen for the rest of my life. And there's some of the best guys I know that are there. They're like my brothers. I, there's like five or six of them that I still keep in touch with. And I, I would go to war with these guys any day of the week. They are some of the most solid people you'll ever meet. And they're happy. They're happy. But I just, I got a taste of a different world. And that's where I needed to be. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. So, you know, talking about being a police officer, one of the things that I'm sure was frustrating to you during that time, it was hands up, don't shoot. Um, how hard was it to be a cop and how hard has it gotten to be a cop? Not that you are one any longer, but what these guys and gals in blue go through every day. When I, when I started to the day I left, it's a completely different profession. You know, we started, there were you had that mix of like old guys that were salty on their way out, like the good old boys from the 80s and the 90s, and yeah. then you had the newer, the way you were trained with the newer guys, and you were kind of stuck in that middle where it was like the new way of doing things, the old way of doing things. Let me tell you something. You as a cop, these guys, these men and women are worth every fucking penny that they get paid, and then some. And you don't get paid for what you do on a daily basis. You get paid for what you might have to do. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Hands down, that, that's all you need to know. You get paid for what you might have to do. Full stop. You know, we, I, one of the best bosses I ever had, Jeff Nelson, he wound up being, he was my first sergeant at night. He wound up being the chief, he's retired now. He's working in like a school in Monroe as like a auxiliary police officer, like he's retired, but he's working in the school. He, he got it, man. He was one of the guys where it's like, listen, it's four o'clock in the morning. He's like, I'm not gonna force you guys like zombies out on the road trying to stay awake. I don't want you guys hiding behind a warehouse trying to fight and to keep your eyes open where someone can go put a gun in your head. If you gotta be inside and you gotta play PlayStation for a half hour to stay sharp and stay awake and if 911 goes off, you guys are on your toes and out the door, that's safer. 
that's smarter than driving around at 4 a.m. like fighting to stay awake. Yeah. You know, it, it, the job is common sense, but you get paid for what you might have to do. You, it, it drives me crazy when people are like, I saw this cop on the side of the road, he was on his phone, or he's watching a movie, or he's doing this. First of all, half the time you see a cop sitting on the side of the road, he's being paid by an outside contractor, they're doing road work. People don't even know what they're looking at, yeah. and they criticize the police. But for the most part, you get paid for the situation well, that you might get. Go back to 9-11. Think about those firefighters and police Bro, officers you get thrown that into ran a situation. into that building. It might be twice in a 25-year career. You get. I, listen, I've been in situations that I, I don't even want to get into where I'm lucky to be here. I am fucking lucky to be here, and I, I don't even want to get into it. There might be three people in the world that know about it. And, and you get paid for the shit that might be thrown at you twice in 30 years. And that's it. And if anybody has a problem with it, fuck them. That's why the that's why there's such a brotherhood and sisterhood with the, with the law enforcement. Yeah, and and you going back it, to what I said. And you see it. They don't really trust outside their group. And no. I get it. Listen, I, go back to Jamie and E. Clean Bro. I was one of his first customers back in the day. I love Jamie. That Jamie's my boy. I've been ordering E. Clean Bro since before he had menus. You text him his order. Hey, Jamie, give me three chickens. And he had like seven options. He was cooking out of Nona's, and he was you know bringing you out the paper bags and. When I was first ordering from him, I never even told him this. I'd, I'd have cops from Marlboro, hey, who's this guy cooking? Is the food legit? Is it safe to eat? Because cops have that mentality yeah. of, we don't go outside our circle. I said, dude, the guy's aces, 100%. He does more for the community and law enforcement and the military, and he's that guy. But in the beginning, it's, who's this kid cooking this food I'm going to eat in, the, in a container that's not, like, sealed? Like, yeah. And I was getting, you know, Marlboro PD, Manalpa PD, hey, that, that food, it's good? Yeah, dude, guy's awesome. Go ahead, order a turkey burger. I promise it's safe. And um, it's funny, I've done some planning with cops and, and I, I donate to all the local PBAs. I have a ton of cops who are friends, family who are cops. Uh, I, I back the blue all day long. Yeah. But uh, I, I refuse to do planning with cops, man, nah. because they, they just. They always think you're trying to fuck yeah, them. Yeah, they want it's, the <laughs> guy that brings them pizza and beer and sets yeah. them up with their 457 plan. That's yep. all they know. That's yep. all the older guy in the station. But that's that do. small, it's that tunnel vision of just what they know. And it's like, it's almost like you fight to get to that retirement. You fight to get to that pension. And all you're doing is and dying then you a die, slow you, death. You die five years after you retire. Yeah. You heart know, attack or something. Heart attack or your back is shot. It, it's just not a... So listen, I, I, want, I want to move on from this. Um, and thank you for your service as nah, a dude, police it, officer. So it's a long 10 years, man. <laughs> what year was it that you and Katie decided to say, hey, we are going to move forward. We are going to purchase this from this old owner. So it was in 2014 that that deal fell through where we had the option to try to work this out to come and buy Jersey Freeze. And she said, are you sure? I said, yeah, fuck it. I'm sure. Let's, let's do it. What, what am I going to do? I'm not going to, you know, got time to make a move. Yeah. Okay. Well. We can't just go to the bank and ask him for a couple million bucks, so we got to figure something out. Okay. The old owner at this point wanted to retire. He said, listen, he's like, I know how the business does. I'm confident that Katie, who's been here for X amount of years, is going to continue the trajectory and, and we're going to be great. So I'll hold the note for a little while. Give yourselves a season. Use your own numbers. Go get an SBA loan. Do what you got to do. I said, okay. So we took over. January 5th, 2015. Got a foot of snow, about 17 degrees outside. We made like 600 bucks. Katie knows the exact number we were joking around about the other day. It was like $711 we made that day. I said, I don't know how this is gonna work. <laughs> I said, we're gonna have a $3 million mortgage, payroll, this, that, the other thing. It's January, don't worry, trust me, trust me. Okay. I lived in Manalpin for 20 years. I never really even knew Jersey Freeze had food. I never ate there. I never knew there was a restaurant. It was just there. It was a snack bar. And it talk a little bit about that real quick. Yeah, so, so you guys obviously are, Full scope ice cream shop with delicious treats. Thank you for what you brought. <laughs> and you guys also provide breakfast and lunch or just lunch? Lunch and dinner. Lunch and lunch dinner. Lunch and dinner. It, restaurant's awesome, man. American food, cheesesteaks, burgers, wraps, wings. Yeah, I was looking at your Instagram sandwiches. with some delicious looking sandwiches. Yeah, sliders. I mean, it's it's like, it's comfort food, but we have I mean, wraps and it's the ultimate go-to spot. Lunch, dinner, takeout. Quick, easy, teams, good. Casual, fast casual, but like quality. We mm -hmm. use good shit. When I took over, when we took over, it was... Jersey Freeze, the ice cream mecca, and then there's a snack bar if you want a hot dog on a paper plate, or you know, the dining room was kind of falling apart. And no discredit to the old owner, he thought they were knocking the yeah, building down. And he was on well, the way out. He's smart. He, yeah. he was a he was a guy who ran a successful business for years and years and years. He has a place in Sarasota, a place in you know in in Maui. He's he's he ready had to that go. liquor license. Sounds like he's he was ready to go. Smart he guy. knew what he, he was. Sharp man, very savvy. 
I'm not gonna, he's not gonna put any money into this building that they're gonna knock down. So when we took over, it was like, okay, we're taking over, but we also need to do, thank God for Katie's husband. Thank God for Phil, shout out to Phil, Katie's husband, Design Plus. He is a, one of the most meticulous, squared away contractors you'll ever meet in your life. And he either supervised or did 100% of the work at the Frio location and at our new location. We needed a roof. We needed an awning. We needed the machines. We needed. We spent probably a quarter million dollars that first year just getting the place back up and running to where it needed to be just to operate. Yeah, operate efficiently. Just like, I mean, it was, it was Band-Aid after Band-Aid after Band-Aid. It would rain. If there was rain in the forecast and we were closing at night, we had, there were like seven or eight buckets that they had to position in the kitchen knowing where the roof was going to leak. Yeah. It was a disaster. Yeah, that's and tough. That first tough to year, make money when you're dealing with that. And that first year, we went and we got an SBA loan. And uh, we took a little bit extra money out because we knew that the amount of shit that we had to do. And we fixed the roof, we fixed the awning, we bought new machines, we, we put five new HVAC units in. We spent a lot of money to get that place just functional. And we're still not done. Mm -hmm. And uh, I said to her, I said, listen, okay, we're gonna give this about a year or two on the food side to get it back to where it needs to be. And if not, we're gonna turn it into a pizzeria. We're gonna have to find a pizzeria to rent half of it or we're gonna turn it into like an L&B outside. Yeah. But it, it worked, man, we use good stuff. We, the food we serve is awesome. Um, now, does the ice cream or the food outperform? Ice cream, food? You know what? They've even they've, they've caught up to each other now. It used to be like, you know, 70% ice cream. Now, it, it, it leveled off. The food is awesome. I mean, That's the good burgers, balance the to have. It's really good balance. And I mean, the bigger margin, obviously, is on the ice cream side. Mm -hmm. And we're able to offer such quality food at a decent price, knowing that about 80% of our customers are going to get ice cream. You know, we're using our, it used to be, go eat at Chili's across the street, go to Jersey Freeze for ice cream. They don't do that anymore. Now they eat at Jersey Freeze, yeah. and then they come out of one door, and they go on the other door, and they get ice cream. Yeah, I, don't, I haven't been to Chili's in about 10 years. But that, that used to be the plan. You yeah. have the diner, you have Chili's, you have Applebee's, and I'm not knocking any of those places, of course, but they of were, course. no one thought to eat at Jersey Freeze. Yeah. And then you come once, like, oh, wow, that was a pretty, pretty good burger. We use the same burger that high-end restaurants use. We use the same ground beef, the same chicken. We're there every day. We eat the food. Yeah. I'm not going to serve shit. There's nothing, you know, it's all natural, all good stuff that we serve. And you're Italian so, from Brooklyn. How can you serve shitty food? Right. Well, that's the other thing, too. I mean, we know Katie's from Freehold. I'm from an Alp, and our families are all still in the area. I know half the people that come in there. I'm, I'm not going to, we're not going to embarrass ourselves and yeah. put out a shit product. And know? I'll talk a little bit more about your ice cream, right? So I'm sure most people don't realize how deep someone can go about ice cream, but I know you got, <laughs> you're the ice cream man. Let me tell you something. She, so it started out that she was gonna be more focused on the ice cream, because that's what she always did, and I was gonna be more focused on the food. Now it's to the point where we can both- Do both. Just go back and forth, and we both know every inch of every product on both sides. Um, the ice cream, listen, you could trick people into thinking that they're eating good soft serve. You could buy mix the same way you go to the store and you, you go to buy a steak and there's 10 levels of steak and the price keeps going up. You could buy cream that's over here where you might taste the, the grittiness or it, you know you might shit your pants on the way home because it's all or, you know, artificial sweeteners in it. Mm -hmm. Or there's high end ice cream mix, high cream content, natural flavoring. Where do you want to be? And most of your customers won't even know the difference. The kids won't notice the difference. Yeah. You know, your kid goes on the boardwalk and he grabs a cone. Oh, that's delicious, mom. Yeah. No, people that know ice cream know what they're eating. It's a better product. We, we'll never, never, never deviate from that. We just won't do it. We yeah, won't and go you're, down. You were talking a little bit earlier that your margins for yourself have shrunk because the cost of that good quality. And we won't go down. I refuse. I won't. We won't give less of a portion. We won't give a lower quality chicken. We won't like. We won't mess with our ground beef. We're famous for our crinkle fries. I'm not gonna go to a cheaper French fry. I just won't do it. Yeah. I'd rather raise the price 50 cents, 75 cents. People know what they're getting. They know what they're yeah. paying for. They want that good quality. Once you get rid of that, Consistency that thing is key. that they want there, you know, that's when your business Consistency starts to go sideways. And, and when we took over, I mean, Katie for so many years was, you know, she ran the place. She was, a, you know, had a, a piece of it or whatever, but she wasn't able to make all the decisions. There were so many things she wanted to do that she had to wait till we were officially the owners for her to start doing. Different package goods and, you know, the ice cream cupcakes that I brought, like so many things that for years, hard ice cream. Jersey Freeze never served hard ice cream before 2014. Now we have the, like some of the best hard ice cream you'll take, you know, you'll have. Those cupcake things are ridiculous. The cupcakes are awesome. And that was all her, that was stuff that she wanted to do forever. And the old owner was like, ah, yeah, we're Descri good. Describe we're good, for, like. the, for the listener <laughs> what is in that, that ice cream cupcake. The ice this cream, is not regular cupcake. The ice cream cupcake is like a piece of ice cream cake. It's, it's cake crunch, fudge, which is the best fudge you can buy, 
chocolate ice cream, vanilla ice cream, rolled in sprinkles, more fudge dribbled on top. It's it's literally it's so ridiculous. It's it, the cupcakes are awesome. They are they're awesome. So talk a little bit more about Katie, your partner, and kind of her role. And again, it sounds like you guys can both flex and do both things. But what would you say her role is, and then what would you say your role is, and how that works? Because <laughs> partnerships don't really work out when you're you know the what? same exact person. You can't be. They, they don't. And in the beginning, we, we kind of like roll reverse because in the beginning, she knew where everything was in the building and how the you know where if there was a noise or a leak or this. Or that. She's been in that building her whole life, essentially. She, we kind of flip flopped into roles. Like I'm the numbers guy. I'm the you know the budgeting and the bills and whatever. Katie will just write checks. <laughs> To just sit down with a checkbook and write checks and not. Well, she's you know, maybe a visionary, or how you set up the dining room, or a new ice she, cream. She's or, the hands-on, up at the counter, working with the girls, just you know, up at the counter, waiting on customers. Like we're both up in there every day, but she's more of the. She's making on. sure that thing's moving efficiently. Right, and I'm I'm more in with the cooks and the kitchen and the menus and the planning and the bills and the the budgeting, and we kind of it, it works, it works. We complement each other well. We Sean kinda, and Pat from Finns, which you love Finns. Finns is great, man. I love Sean, Finns. Sean, he wants to open up a uh, Jersey we'll freeze for the Finns. We do half Finns, half Jersey freeze if you want, because I'm not doing another restaurant. We, we can make that happen. I want 10% of the deal. 10% for the 10 big guy. 10% to the big guy. 10% to the big guy. <laughs> All day long. So Don't ask who it is, though. Yeah, exactly. So rolling along, one of the things that, since I've been paying attention and heard about Jersey freeze now for about a year and a half, you guys are very involved in the community. This whole thing has been about Ryan's walk of life, how I struggled and didn't have a lot of help, and then wanting to turn around and help young business owners or established business owners in my community. You guys are heavily involved in your community. Talk about some of the stuff that you do and, and events that you throw. I know you guys were huge donors and big help to Live Like a Unicorn. Yeah. So Live Like a Unicorn, I mean, she was the sweetest little girl. I mean, she was coming in from before she was sick and while she was sick and, you know, just what a horrible horrible yet amazing story at the same time but Katie had a really had a had a real soft spot for Liv and she would come in and even before she was even really sick she'd bring her in the back and she'd make her own ice cream and we were such a part of that organization from the ground up before Emma even Emma's done such amazing things she's crushing it she cru but before she even knew what she was doing like am I allowed to do this like she she was so green and and we were one of her first like we'll do it with you whatever you need you're like, helping her and we, I think that when COVID hit, we, because we're such a part of the community, I think we were one of those businesses that people had to help. We got to support Jersey Freeze. We have to go to Jersey Freeze. We have to make sure that we take care of the, the, the businesses that take care of us. We sponsor all the teams. We do all the fundraisers. My calendar for the Dine to Donates are, are I'm booked through Christmas. We, we have what are every, those? Talk about that a little bit. So like, you're, you're coaching your son's uh, five-year-old soccer team. You want to raise money? Okay, we give you a day. You promote it to your network. They come in. We give you twenty percent back, whatever it. it is that day. Dine, we're, we're booked out till till December. That's amazing. We do man. them every Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Every team, every school, every PTA. And honestly, you know, we started doing that a couple of years ago. And me, it was a way to people to try our food. Yeah. We had to build this restaurant back up. That's what it was about, really. We had to get people to try our food and become a, a once or twice a month spot. You know, they knew our ice cream. Oh, they have food? Okay, I guess, well, that's really good. We needed the restaurant to, to pick back up. And we, we incorporated everything we did into the community to kind of, you know, kind of went hand in hand with that. Talk about, though, that for the young business owner that's watching or even the established business owner that's trying to reinvent his or herself, um, how important it is to build your brand in your community? It, it's so important. And it's even more important now with, like, the Facebook resident groups if there's a complaint you know how many people have our back if somebody like writes up a stupid complaint? We had one last night. Some asshole. We forgot his ranch dressing on his cheese stick. He went on Facebook. Blah, 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 blah. I can only say this because I listened to the phone call of how he spoke to one of my employees and he's not welcome back. So, you know, they go on the residence page. Unbelievable. Jersey freeze. They forgot my ranch dressing. 15 people. Cry about it. What are you kidding me? Yeah. You, they're great. How could you bash? Yeah. Like, we have enough support because, you know, we're. we're Shit happens. Listen, we're understaffed. If we fuck up. I'll make it right 10 times over. I will hand deliver your food to your house. I will come in, I'll meet your family, I'll cook your, yeah. you know, I'll cook it for you. Yeah. Whatever you need to, it, but don't come in and disrespect my staff. We hire kids, we know most of their parents. They They're in feel, the community. They feel safe having their kids work for Katie and I. I treat them like they're my own kid. You're not gonna come in and disrespect one of my employees, you're not. I'd rather lose a customer. Mm -hmm. I've had people make 15 and 16 year old girls cry 
We had a guy, I've physically thrown three people out of Jersey Freeze. One guy reached across the counter and took a swing at a kid. He was drunk. Over he was mad cream? he couldn't get a hamburger on the ice cream side. I have a video of it. I'll show you later. I literally opened the door with his head, threw him out of Jersey Freeze. I, I won't take it. Yeah. We're not going to, I'm not going to take shit to save a customer. We do the right thing. I can justify everything I say and everything I do. If you want to cancel us or talk about us, I can justify everything I've done. Yeah. This I is don't why think you're I, getting canceled in that town. This is why I threw this guy out. You want to see what he said to this little girl? Oh, by the way, that's her father and that's her uncle and they live in town. So tell them what they said to you. Like, I'm not going to have my, my staff disrespected by people that have that customer is always right mentality. Well, if the Yelp's right, we'll make it all, right. the, all the online stuff has allowed the, you know, the online bullying. The tough guys. Right? right. Yeah, like you know, keyboard tough guys. Come they, in and talk to me about it. They're just miserable. Do we fuck up? I'll make about. it right. I promise I'll make it right. We always make it right. Ten times over if we fuck up. Yeah. If it's some stupid, listen, we apologize. Mistakes happen. It's human error. It, 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 it happens. Most of our employees are kids. You know, yeah. they have anxiety. They're shy. They're this, they're that. They're, they're good kids, man. They're good kids. And no one's going to come in and talk. I treat them like they're our own. Yeah. And their parents know that. And their parents' friends own that. And the community knows that. And everybody knows that. And, and no one's going to come in and bully our kids around. And, and it's gotten out of control, especially during COVID. People are just, you know, the keyboard warriors are home. It's gotten out of control. In the beginning... It was, oh my God, thank you. We got to support them. People started getting angry. They're home longer. Yeah. They're I want to talk about are, COVID. Yeah. You know, so you're a restaurant owner. COVID, uh, man. COVID hits. Obviously, like you said, you had the support of the community. What were you guys doing to make sure that you were helping feed the community? Well, you want to start back? with COVID. We were supposed to open up our second location the day COVID, the day the, day the world shut down. Yeah, quickly talk about your second location. So we have a location in Bell Works in Homedale. It's just ice cream. The Bell Works complex is unbelievable. You guys gonna be involved in that haunt the ween? Yeah, we got a, we got a booth out there. Yeah. Haunt the ween. Shout out Bell Works. Um, awesome, awesome complex. A lot of really good businesses yeah, in there. there. At that place Great is almost Great place max. for the kids to run around. We, we, we have a really nice spot in there. Katie's husband, Phil, built out this. It's one of the nicest ice cream stores you'll ever go into. It's almost too nice. Katie and my wife designed the inside and of that store. Shout out to your wife. Shout out to Laura Lee, my wife, my little boy Mason, Katie, and Phil. And um, they designed the inside of this store to the point where Phil looked at both of them and said, "We're not living in this in this fucking space. Yeah. It's an ice cream you store. We're getting out of control. Calm down <laughs> with the granite and the marble and the the fucking. You guys are dying. Can't help yourself. What are you do, What are you doing? <laughs> Quarter million dollars to open up a thousand square foot ice cream store. Like, calm down. But so go back to March third. I I never forget it. Friday the 13th, March 13th, 2020. We get our CO, Board of Health, we get cleared to go, everything's set up, this immaculate, beautiful ice cream store, Jersey Freeze 2, we're ready. We sent an announcement out on the, like the Bell Works email chain, free ice cream, come down, free samples. Elevator after elevator, everybody in the building that was at work that day, try the, we're handing out cones all day long, about 4 p.m., get an email. As of Monday, March 15th, iSims, WorkWave, Guardian Insurance, all the big all the big shots in that Fortis, all the big players in that place were all gonna go virtual. They were shutting down the complex. Fuck, I guess we're not opening. Empty the machines, clean the machines, turn the lights off, we'll revisit. We'll revisit the home Dell location another day. How long was it gonna last? Nobody knew. Okay, two weeks. We'll open up in two weeks. No problem. Let's worry about freehold for two weeks. Freehold, our expenses are out of control. We have to figure out what to do with COVID now in freehold. So we all were relying on Fauci. We're all relying on, on the Lord and Savior, Tony Fauci. And uh, you think he's going to go to jail? I hope so. Yeah. Fuck that guy. I don't even care. Yeah, Fuck that I guy. don't care either. Um, Straight lied to people. Listen, no I, had, mass, I have family members that I, I had an aunt in Brooklyn that passed from it. I'm not saying the actual virus isn't real. Of course the virus is real. what they did to people was disgusting. Yeah, it was a pandemic. And people need to be held accountable. Yeah. And that's that's for another day Well, especially also. for business owners. So talking about you guys, you know, you're, you're a establishment in the community. You're a pillar in the community. You're talking about how much you guys are involved. So what we come back. Doing? We come back from Bell Works, knowing that okay, we're not opening. That was going to be our big opening week. We were planning a party. We were going to have a big grand opening. Okay, put that on hold for now. Let's worry about freehold. Let's worry about home base. Okay. You think it's going to be two weeks? Maybe three weeks? Maybe a month? It's not really ice cream season yet. It's still March. Okay, we'll be okay. We can figure this out. If this gets into spring break, if this gets into April, we're going to have a problem. We got to figure something out. So Katie and I, we sat upstairs. We said, okay, what are we going to do? We have no dining room. We're takeout heavy anyway. Let's figure out what we're gonna do to get through these two weeks. Now you're only planning for two weeks. We loaded up on product. Okay, 
let's do curbside pickup. We never did anything like that. We have our own parking lot. I ordered a bunch of cones. We set up this little, like almost like a road job when I was a cop. I'm planting cones. I had a little maze. We had a whole pickup thing set up in the parking lot. We did crazy amounts of cur curbside pickup all through Facebook, posting on Facebook. Hey guys, we're all in this together. We're gonna give these uh, family specials. We're gonna do slider packs and chicken finger packs and take home Sunday kits and all this stuff because people are stuck in the house. Great, it was a home run. We had to turn the phones off. That's how busy it was. We could not keep up with the, the orders. Community gave back to Community you. was like, we got to support Jersey Freeze. We got to support Feds. We got to support all the staples that were always there for the community. They were the ones that were taken care of first. Metropolitan Cafe downtown. Gives me chills, man. It's like Mezzaluna. All the, all the local businesses that everyone loves that's always there when your soccer team needs a sponsor. That We we were so grateful, but that's man. A, they, that's that's America, so, man. It, that's... That's who America really is. Let me tell you something. At the end of the night, you sat there and you looked at the night and you're like, wow, I don't even know what just happened for those last eight hours. I'm shot. But, wow. And, and, and you literally, and this is even before the masks. This is March. This is before the masks. You were having conversations with every person whose food you were bringing out to the car. Thank you guys so much. This is amazing. This is all my kids look forward to. The Sunday kits. The it was awesome. It was like, you know, I couldn't, we couldn't be more grateful for what this town did for us during that first month or so of COVID. Then it got weird. Then it got weird. You know, people got their stimulus checks. They were happy. Then they were angry. Then they were happy. Then you got that divide of like the people who refused to wear the mask. You didn't want to go inside. We're in a tough spot. Why'd you point at me when you said refused to wear the mask? I was just going left and right. You just happened to be sitting there. So, you know, you had that mix of you didn't know what to do. We had to follow the rules just to be open. Yeah. So, yeah. All if my you, friends that were restaurant owners, DV Tree, Charlie's, what, what we do, put on the mask because we don't want these people to be penalized. But this is my livelihood. Yeah, that's This is livelihood. Katie's livelihood. Yeah. We had to follow the rules. Yeah. And, and the state every, could shut you down like that. Every Murphy day. Didn't care. And all you needed was the social media, the picture. I was in Jersey Freeze today, and they're not wearing masks in the kitchen, or they're not wearing masks behind the counter. And there was a good portion of people who were customers that were so, I'm only going to places where the girls are wearing gloves and masks. Listen, we know the science on gloves. They're filthy. Yeah. Gloves disgusting. are disgusting. Disgusting. Clean hands, 100 times over, filthy gloves. If I'm wearing a glove, I'm crushing the garbage. I'm picking up this. Gloves are disgusting unless you're changing them every couple of seconds after every order. So these people that walked around with the gloves How all crazy day, is it that all, all that now is all, 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 of, all of it's BS. None of it worked anyway. So we had to follow the rules. We had to follow the exact rules that we were told just to operate our business. I'm still angry about it. But you know what? We got through it, and it was it was really just a, it, was, it was I don't know if I would do it again. Yeah. We talk about it often. If they ever tried that shit again, I don't know if we would do it again. We might just say, okay, fuck it. We'll see you next year. Yeah. And turn the lights. I don't I know if we do it again. I think they wanted to try it again. I don't know if we would do it again. I really don't. I, I don't know if we have it in us to actually get through that again. It was so hard. It was it was draining. It was literally. We started closing on Sundays and Mondays. We needed two days just to not be there. Yeah. We were open five days a week, 11 a.m. to 9 p.m., and then we just shut down two days. And then it got warmer out. Now, now your ice cream business is really starting to take a hit. So now you're getting into May, and the governor had the parks closed. He had no, and there was nothing to do. Yeah. We were doing takeout only over the phone. I want to get an ice cream cone. I want to get a milkshake. We weren't doing that kind of stuff. We were doing yeah. these these prepackaged yeah, kits. Yeah. So now we had to get creative. We had to hang the plexiglass. We had to, you know, I spent probably ten grand on stickers and signs and arrows and cones and and partitions and we had to make this place look like uh yeah. like you were going through customs in another country it's to get an stupid. ice cream cone. It's so stupid. I have a stack of plexiglass in my warehouse this high now. Yeah. That we, we took down. And we had to literally turn this place into Fort Knox. And then you worry about, and listen, rightfully so, you worry about the, your employees and whose yeah, parents don't yeah. want them working and who don't want them around people. And, you know, you had the mask, the plexiglass. It well, listen, was, let's be honest. Everybody was scared to be Nobody no one knew, knew what anything. the fuck was going on. I was going wiping on. my groceries. No Nobody one knew, knew what was going on. Listen, at they the end of the day, I knew I felt fine. You know, and, and, you know, you had people that were afraid to. We had, we had. Fun fact, I've never, ever, ever still to this day taken one PCR test or COVID test ever. You sick? You stay home. Yeah, it's like they, that's what people, you should do. It in general, we had people the paying for their food, putting the money on the ground, and running away from it. Okay, it's uh, eighteen, eighteen forty nine, twenty dollar bill on the ground. They scamper away. Money's always been filthy. When did you ever handle money and not wash your hands? Yeah. Did you never you touch money, wipe your face? No, money's always been dirty. Yeah, it's gross. It's exchanging and hands. People, people are losing where. their minds. But you know what? They supported us. We got through it. I don't I'm know if about we do the Brazilians as as all the business owners, especially the restaurant owners, we, right? I mean, you, know, you guys, 
all the restaurant owners that I know around here, I mean, the money they spent while their business was down. So now you're going to dip into savings or Bro, cash flow. And, and here's the thing. Like, we got one of those, uh, not the PPP, one of those grants. We got one of those $10,000 EIDL, EIDL, EIDL grants. Yeah. Ten grand. I spent that just in stickers on the ground, plexiglass, stuff that I wouldn't have had to spend if they didn't make us operate like this. That yeah. money was gone before it even came in. I get a call from the governor's office. Hey, the governor wants to do a, a shout out. He wants to put you guys on the news and talk about what you did with your funds. I go, fuck out of here. Talk about what, I, I spent it on, on stuff that I had to, it's gone. Yeah. He's gonna be on, you're gonna, he's doing a press conference. He wants to feature you guys. I said, I, I'm, I'm not gonna be this yeah. guy's pawn because yeah. he gave me 10 grand. Yeah, I'm not into it. We're good. They wanted to do a press conference in our parking lot. Listen, I didn't have my son at the time, but I saw the anger in some of these parents with the kids with the mask. I, I'm not having. They're gonna kill horrible, this guy. They horrible. can't have this guy in our yeah. parking lot. We can't. We don't do po We don't do politics. I spoke to him on the phone. You don't have to agree with anything he does. What I could tell you positively about the governor, he's one of the nicest guys you will ever speak to in your life. You almost feel like a bad person when yeah, you hang I up the phone. I met him in Charlie. He seems like a really good you person. You talk to him. I, it, I was like a five minute conversation. I hung up the phone. I, I told him, what a nice fucking guy. What a much nicer than me. What a nice guy. Mm -hmm. But I don't agree with a lot of what he did. Yeah. But what a nice guy. I don't want him to do a press conference in my parking lot because half the people are going to be this side. Half the people are going to be that side. We're in the middle. Yeah. I understand the people on this side. I understand the people on that you side. You understand people. There's, I understand there's people. No, there's no if sides. You feel all the same way, if you want to come out in a beekeeper suit and, and three men, God bless you. Whatever I, I can do to make you. I will put you on Instagram if I see you in a beekeep, beekeeper whatever, suit. Whatever, listen to me. Whatever makes you feel comfortable, I'm fine with that. Let me know how you want your burger cooked and, and have a great day. And I got to see you in a beekeeper suit. Bro, you got one, I'll put it on. <laughs> it's, it's not, it, I respect everybody. I respect everybody. I, I expect the same respect. Return. Good people, and that's it. If you feel a certain way, and listen, you don't know why. It could be you're wearing three masks because you have, you know, a parent at home with cancer, or you have a kid. You don't know everybody's story. It's none of your business. Mm -hmm. I stay in my lane. We we talk about this all the time. Stay in your lane. That's it. I respect you. You respect me. You respect my business. We give you a good product, a good service for a good price. We we give back to the community. We're good people. Everybody knows us, and that's it. You know, are you worried about this? I'm not worried about anything. I could just, Katie and I could justify everything we say and do, and we could back it up. If someone bashes us on Facebook, give me a few minutes. I'll figure it out. I'll, I'll respond. Make it right. Our phone calls are recorded. I can go back and listen to the call. People lie. They, they're full of shit. It is what yeah. it is. I, I don't want to have to ever put somebody on blame. I won't. We can yeah. justify everything it's not we who you say. Are. Yeah. We could justify me, everything I, I, I we say. It. That we do the right thing. We do the right thing. And people know that. The people that know us know that. We've had. Complaints. We've had fights. We've had you can feel that off you. You're just a genuine guy. It's, it's real. We're, we're, this is what it is. So, <clears throat> what I like to do in this last segment is talk a little bit about the future and the vision that you and Katie have for your business and Jersey Freeze. Talk a little bit about what you guys have on the planning board and what you see for Jersey Freeze in the future. So, I think the first portion of this, our partnership, and was saving the legacy of Jersey Freeze. It was opened in 1952, it's been there forever, it's been a staple, it's got the name, it's got the history. Now that we've brought that place back to where it needed to be, we opened the second location in Homedell. I think we both agree that the Homedell location would now be the model moving forward for any other future Jersey Freeze. And we almost opened up in Manasquan this year, it just wasn't right, it's gotta be right. We don't wanna step on anyone's toes either. Like we don't, we have such a high regard for some of the other ice cream staples, the Hoffmans, the Nicholas, yeah. the Sundays. We know them, we respect the hell out of them. We're not opening up in their backyard, they're not opening up in our backyard. Mm -hmm. Bell Works was perfect, it was our own complex, it was our own world, that worked for us. Mm -hmm. Maybe we go west, maybe we go towards Princeton, maybe we go towards Cranberry, out that way. Maybe Down the shore, it's gotta be, it's gotta be ours, it can't be, you know, now is that something you're looking to yeah, start we're some always corporate looking, stores we're always first, looking, or you're gonna actually launch the franchise model? We can go either way. It. We're looking, honestly, we're open to anything. We've had people approach us, I want to open up a Jersey Freeze in Colorado. I want to open up a Jersey Freeze here. Okay. We have a meeting schedule. We're gonna we're gonna look to possibly franchise, maybe. Um, we also might look to just open more stores. What we did in Bell Works. Shout out to our manager there, Fiona. We took one of our best girls from Freehold and we basically gave her the Bell Work store and said, hey, you're gonna run this store. You know how we operate, you know how we work. We don't have to be there as much as we'd have to, you know, normally yeah, we have to be. Uh, you'd be jumping She's back great. and forth. She's, she runs that store like it's her own. Maybe we take, we have 
couple other really full-time great managers, maybe we take one of them and we say, hey, this is your store now. Kind of like the Jersey Mike's model a little bit. Ki- kind of, yeah, similar to that, where we know that food is 90% of the aggravation and ice cream's a little bit easier to, to manage, mm-hmm. where we can open up more ice cream shops. It has to just fit. The location has to work, the timing has to work. We get approached all the time, places that are closing, you know, different that- uh, You had some other franchises wanting to buy your property too, right? Yeah, we, we had a couple of uh, big shot burger franchises that came and, you know, threw money at us that wanted to buy the property. Listen. You love uh, the community. You don't uh, wanna- we, we're, we're a part of the community. And I, listen, I'm 40 years old. Katie's just a tad older. She's like like 39. And um, we're not ready to retire yet. You, you're not just buying the property. You're like, you pay tax. Like, I got to get a job. I got to go back to, you know, I got to be a security guard somewhere. Yeah. What, what am I going to do? You know, I don't I don't fit in anymore with these. Uh, you work for Fireside. I work for Fireside. I can, you know. <laughs> you but, run uh, around. You put the gun back on. I'll, you. I'll go pump gas for Steve or something like that. I'll, hey, Steve's we'll here. We'll pump gas for Steve. We'll pump gas for Steve. Look how handsome he is. Look at that. But, um. He's going to be an actor. He's going to be an actor. He's going to hit his dream one day. Olive oil skin. Entourage. And guinea charm. We do the entourage of Manalpa. Entourage of Marlboro. <laughs> right. I love it. He was the only Italian kid in his crew in Marlboro. He already had an advantage. That's what it was. I thought he's Greek. He might be Greek. I don't know. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Your mom always be some meatballs though. in his hair. But um, that's yeah, cool. I think you guys whether we to- decide to franchise it out or, or open up more corporate stores, we're going to continue to grow. Whether it's you know food trucks or whether it's whatever it is, we're, we're motivated. We're very conservative with our finances. We have a you know we have a war chest saved. We're ready to go. We're, we're just looking for the right opportunity. We only hire good people and we only keep the really good people and, and, and you know, advance them up the ladder. So That's awesome. Know, That's exciting, man. And the way the world is now, the whole nine to five sitting at a desk thing is starting to change. People realize that two of our managers now, you know, had left previously to go get real jobs. No, now they have real jobs with us where we pay them better and they have yeah. a better situation. Like we're a real job. And I think that's so, sometimes as as small business owners, kudos to you guys. They don't recognize that. Right. They're not willing to share in, you know, the profits with the people who have helped you 100%. get there. And then you lose those people and then we, things we slide backwards. Well. We, we give them their time off. We do whatever, you know, we're, they're a part of our lives. They're, they're family to us. We take really good care of them because if they leave, we got a problem. Yeah. We got to we gotta shuffle around and we got, well, Katie and I will always figure it out. We're always, I can go in the kitchen if I have to. She can clean all the machines. We could we could run that place if we had to, but we have really good people that we don't want to lose. Yeah. We have a really good oh, they're, team they're that we help. built. They're big help. You know, and it's, it's, it's really busy. And going back to what you were saying, like our numbers are out of control. Our bottom line is shrunk with inflation, with what everything's costing us, but we're really busy. And thank God, and, and God bless this community for keeping us as busy as we are. But it sounds a, like you guys have been pretty good to the community We've been as well. really good to the community, and it's not going to stop. It, it, it goes hand in hand. It goes hand in hand. They remember that. You know, Manalop and Little League, they do their picture night now. Three nights a week, they put the trailer up on our hill. Every single team that plays Manalop and Little League baseball and softball gets their team photos taken in our parking lot. That's and amazing. And we give them a portion of the money back that we make that entire day. There's so many things we do for Freehold, Freehold Borough, Manalop, and Marlboro, Millstone, Colts Neck, all these towns. And now we're getting into the Homedell community a little bit more with the teams there. Yeah. We're starting to build a network around Bell Works. And people just want to just, just do business with us. And, and it's fine. We support all all the local businesses around us. We try to order food from them. And we try to, you know, send referrals their way. My partner Katie's in Latip. My wife's in Latip, that local networking mm-hmm. thing. They yeah. go every Thursday morning, you know, 6 a.m. And they're constantly, you know, pushing brands at trying different people, people and trying to help people. That's what it's all about. That's you awesome. know, it's just so, so, so talking about that, to, to round this out, I like to ask a couple questions. Um, the first question is, What's one thing you would tell a cop, and let's go cop, that is not loving his job? As a police officer, I think it's so difficult now more than ever, and hopefully that pendulum swings back over the next 10 years. He hates his life, wants to go do something, it, but is scared. What's the one it, thing you so would tell t- him? It's so tough for me because I'm still a part of them. I was a PBA president for seven years. Seven out of my 10 year career, I was a PBA president. I'm still invited to all the functions and all the mixers and all the whatever. It, everybody's situation is different. I was lucky enough to be in a department that allowed me to open a business. Guys might be stuck. They might be 18 years in, 19 years in, counting the days till they retire and then die. Yeah. It, you can't be afraid. So if you're a guy that can though, what's one thing you would tell him? Don't what's be one afraid bit of to advice? do it. You, if, you ha- if you're able to still have your career while you figure shit out, do it. 
Just fucking do it. Even when I was in the department I was in, I was afraid to go to a better department, a bigger department, a higher paid department. How much more flexibility do you have? And listen, being a business owner is not easy, right? <laughs> so anybody out there, being a business owner is probably harder. I don't get sick days. I don't get personal uh, days. No I don't vacation get, my phone pay days. Turn off. Right. But... I the knew flexibility I could turn. you have to be with your family, and you seem like a very family-oriented guy. We're just you starting to get back to that now. It, it was rough for a while, but once you get your business running the way you want it to run, and you have the right people, and you take care of the right people, it, it's more predictable. You're able to you pick your And you feel better when it's for you. When you when you have that, you know, like we were talking about before, like the ceiling. There's no ceiling now. It's your business. You can be as busy as you want to be. It, you're going to put in the work. You're going to reap the benefits. You could have been the best cop in the world, and... You know, another guy in your department could have done something really stupid, and now that everybody hates all of you. Yep. You know, you get lumped in with the one, the, the three out of the hundred that are bad. It's tough. It's tough. So it's tough. Another question I like to do: I like to give two business owners in your community. So talking about Manalpa and Freehold, Freehold Borough, Marble. Give me two other business owners, and we can't say Steve, and we can't say Mike, because we already gave them love. Can't say Jamie, Katie, my partner, would tell the same story, right? Yes, we got it. We got. I got give. one. I got one who who, who would vibe with you. Great. Uh, Anthony Vergosh, he owns Harvest, the restaurant in Farmingdale. Had a rough childhood, got into some trouble, bounced around, worked at pizzerias. My dad was going to get him in the concrete and didn't know what he wanted to do. Finally found his home in Farmingdale. When I tell you this kid does everything, he cooks, he brings the food out, he, he runs this restaurant. What is it? What, what Farmingdale. It's like a farm to table. It's called Harvest. Farm, farm to table. It's, he's got like maybe eight, nine tables total. Little I'll place. To check it out. Downtown Farmingdale. Great guy. Similar views, similar, just yeah. gets it. he gets it. Hard time, COVID killed him. Hard time finding help. Really solid dude, makes awesome food. Probably knows Petey Riley. The epitome of small business. He he runs that place by himself. That's amazing. Owner, um, operator. Give us another guy, one. Give us one more. I think you know, so you're going to do something with um, Hawksby the barber. Do you know Anthony Hawksby? I don't know. Because I mentioned to my barber, Andrew Evilsizer, Evil Fades, that I was coming on the show, and he said, I think Anthony Hawksby's got a barber shop in Asbury. I think he knows Ryan. But long story short, he started cutting hair out of his garage, and now he's got two barber shops, mm -hmm. one in Millstone, one at Red Bank. He's got products he sells online, Evil Fades. Solid kid, man. He's right. probably like a younger kid. He's like 30 years old. That's awesome. He started cutting hair in his garage, and now he's got two barber shops and a product line they sell on Amazon. and. Really, really good dude. Kudos good family. Him. Man, he's got his little brother cutting hair, working for him now. His mom works the front counter. It's the epitome. When you talk about small business, family run, family oriented, comes to mind right away. I see him every Friday. Business name again? He is Evil Fades. Evil Fades. He's in Millstone and Red Bank, and then I would say Anthony from Harvest Restaurant. And this is obviously because we can't have Steve on again or uh, yeah. Mike. From we CKL can't give Scalfani anymore. And love. you got enough real. I mean, a lot of my good, a lot of my best friends are realtors and, and stuff like that. A lot like of that. realtors. A lot of realtors, and they're all solid, dude. Like, shout out to all of them. But um, well, listen, dude, I, I appreciate you coming out. I know you're a busy guy, family at home. That's right. Um, this has been awesome. We're gonna have some good stuff. Glad that comes I finally out got here. I hope I didn't talk too much. I no, tend to dude, just you go gave us a lot then. of good color and <laughs> contacts. I appreciate it. Cheers. Yeah. Cheers.